It's fine. Hello, Internet. I'm Dan. And I'm Chaz. <laughs> I'm going to start. If you do. What up, Internet? I'm Chaz. I'm Dan. Welcome to Wine and Serious Business, episode 135. We spent last week uh, blowing up some stuff from California. <laughs> it was good. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it was. And, and I've got some like really juicy Spanish stuff kind of on the wings waiting to try, but I'm like, I don't, I don't want to go show to show of you know, big fruity stuff. So we're going to get back into Oregon. We've got yep. a couple of Pinot Noirs at a really sweet price point here tonight. Um, so this is the kind of show I know a lot of people like to see. These are wines that both of us are really interested in checking out. Um, we've tried a few of them before in previous vintages. Um, both familiar with all these producers for a while, so right. So it should be a good time. And also really cool for, for people who watch the show outside of the state. Uh, the Argyle and the Lang specifically are going to make it outside. Right? They have a pretty totally. decent distribution, probably a large amount of bottles made per year. So uh, depending on what we think, you know, you check them out. So let's or Definitely. either way, check them out. But uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get into it. So we'll start with the Argyle here, what, 2010 Willamette Valley. Yep, yep, sure is. Thirteen percent. Sure is. Argyle is not one I drink a lot of regularly, honestly. Yeah. Um, their uh, their sparkling wines are very good every year, um, and they age remarkably well. You know, I've had them with like six, eight years age on them, and they get really interesting. Yeah. It's not not mind blowing, but just a very uh, fun, interesting wine. So definitely worth checking out their sparkling wine stuff. All of their like high end, they make some high end stuff called the Extended Tourage, which is really good. Um, but yeah, so this is just their base Pinot. Willamette Valley blend, that's it. So and all sub-20, right? You said all these were yeah, less than so 20 bucks? That's another cool thing about this show is all of these wines are at the $15 price point. Yeah. Some are a little more, a little less, but essentially you're going to see these on the supermarket shelf for 15 bucks. So. Mm. It's pretty good. Yeah. Man, these have been open Pop just, board. just now. And, and screw, screw 20 caps. Minutes. So. Yeah, all screw caps. So, 20 minutes. A little bit of leather here, like you were talking baseball glove last week. There's some of that coming through, I think. I'm just getting like fresh strawberries. Hops, yeah, strawberries yeah, are like, like real up fresh and, and, and ripe, like not real nice. Not a lot of organ characteristic to it, none of that sort of funky earth thing that you get sometimes, but uh, you know, just really, really inviting nose. I'm getting a little bit of heat too, but still nice. Starts out real nice. The strawberries come into play right away. Yeah, kind of set nicely on the front of the palate. Just a little bit of cranberry. There's like some tartar red berries in there. There's a yeah. little bit of like that. A little bit of raspberry in there. Um, yeah, mostly here just about the red berry fruit. Not getting much else, but you know, uh, for what it is, it's like it's, it's nice, right? There's yeah, nothing, there's nothing wrong with it. Straight to the point. That look, that yeah. heat on the nose is coming in. For me, kind of in the center of the palate, late. Kind of overwhelms a little bit of the fruit because the fruit's light, but the fruit's got a good flavor. The texture up front's pretty good. Just a little more heat than I really care for, but overall pretty nice and at sub 20. Still, and, and you're not feeling it. Right? Oh, no, no, I'm not, I'm not feeling you. Yeah, yeah. I'm not getting the heat so, that Dan perceives here. Two opinions there. Yeah. Um, and the acidity's coming through like, yeah, it's sort of like a cranberry, sort of uh, maybe even like just a hint of like grapefruit, red, red grapefruit there. Um, but yeah, super easy to drink, very light body. Like, this is just, this is not going to overwhelm to, for, for me. I don't think it would overwhelm the food at all, which would be a really nice pairing with just about anything. Um, 86 plus. I like it quite a bit. It's good. 80, 85 for me. Um, yeah, so the, the heat gets me a little bit, but I like the flavors. I like the texture early on. And the fact that it's got a light touch to it across the board means it's definitely easy drinking. Definitely something for sitting around, best around the computer with, right. watching TV. And these are at room temperature, granted, so oh, about point. the heat thing. Yeah. So these are fully at room temperature, and we run our apartment a little warmer than normal. So had these been, you know, maybe in the like fridge for 20 minutes before we pulled them out, the heat might not be as perceivable. To That's so, yeah, almost certainly true, and it doesn't feel warm by any stretch, but but it can certainly account for that little bit more perception of, of, of alcohol there. Yeah, good wine. So, yeah, definitely worth checking out. You see it on the supermarket shelf, the 2010 is pretty good, so... And while it doesn't have the organ funk, I think the fruit characteristics it, the, it delivers are true to organ funk. Delicious. For me, man, you can get, get that strawberry fruit out of so, well, I wouldn't say so many places, but it's that, like, when you get that overwhelming funk, that, like, earthy yeah. funk, that's like, yeah, that's, that's Oregon. Right? Like, that, that gets you, so. Uh, wine number two here, this is the Laurel. 
Uh, also from 2010, it's a single meter, no, nope, Willamette oh, Valley designate as well. Um, and this is from the J. Alvin Winery, which is one of the wineries we were exposed to really early on. I don't know if he still watches this show, but Ron Mathis introduced us to a bottle of 2002 J. Alvin Pinot that was delicious. Uh, right when we were both getting started, and I still remember that. And yeah, he started making this line as, uh, yeah, it's like right, right around 15 bucks, um, sometimes a little bit less even. Uh, Oregon Pinot Noir, really accessible. I've liked previous vintage seven, so I'm curious to see how this one goes. Uh, yeah, you see this one on the restaurant list pretty regularly, aren't it? It's glass Sure, colors. totally. Um, I remember the 2009 being especially good. I think we had it at like a wine bar or something. Killer, right? So, yeah. Nice. So it tries out a little, little darker than the Argyle. Definitely. Right off the bat. So. Darker on the nose, too. I mean, yeah. like, uh, that's coming in a little dirty for me. Yeah, like chocolate and raspberries kind of in some darker earth underneath it. It's like it reminds me of sort of like the, the raspberry, blackberry patch sort of thing. You know? Yeah. You got the blackberries, you're eating them, you're out there, and it's like dirty and whatever. It's got a little, just a... Maybe yeah. a little red earth even, yeah. It's good stuff. It smells good. It's spicy, yeah. Good complexity in the nose, yeah. Getting raspberries with a little bit of stems and kind of like little raspberry seeds right on the front end of the palate there. There is some definite like the stemmy notes mm -hmm. getting like right off the bat, but man, the fruit is really good here. Like uh, sort of more more cherry and raspberry driven. Yeah. Like maybe even a bit of a uh, whereas you go with the seeds, like I think more like pomegranate, you know. Okay. A little, little yeah, bit of that going sense. on in there. Um, but uh, yeah, that's that's. Hey, another, you know, another good vintage of this stuff. Man, so, and, and that's also good, that's made good. for easy drinking. I'm noticing kind of like a distinct difference in experience for if I have a sip and I just let it sit on my palate, I get more of the stems mm -hmm. and the fruit kind of gets overwhelmed right away. But if I have a drink and just kind of toss it back, the fruit kind of washes across the palate. It's more of a unified experience. I'm getting some like nice strawberries in there too. Um, th this almost is almost like a textbook definition of easy drinking to me. Like no heat, like on the last one. Um, it, I'm not getting it on this. There's a little more structure here. I'm getting a little bit, of, just a real gentle tannic grip, kind of like when the when the there is, cats call you, but they yeah. don't mean to do damage. They're just trying to get your attention. It's kind yeah. of what the tannins are doing here. That's a that's a really good way of putting it. Like uh, there is just enough structure to sort of balance out the fruit, whereas the argyle will sort of just light across the board. Not a lot of acidity, not hardly any perceivable tannins in that one. Yeah, now that you mention it, it's true. Man. This one's this one's definitely a little a little more substantial. And in, in a good way, mm -hmm. across the board, this is a really nice wine. Eighty points. Whoa. Eighty-seven. Uh, Eighty-seven minus for it's me. Good. Um, it's good. It's it's definitely on the simple side, but at this price point, that's not something you really hold against it a whole lot. And like I said, textbook easy drinking, enjoyable. I think this would appeal to more of a range of people. Um, yeah, thinking it definitely delivers at the price point. I think with the fruit and the, there's a little bit of added complexity coming from like the stemmy notes and a little bit of earthy stuff coming from it, and, and that's why I go 80 points on it. It's yeah, like, it's cool stuff. So, all right, another big player in the game. Um, this guy's been around a while. Lang. Yep. Uh, in Dundee, actually, up on the hill. Uh, what do I have to say about them? Had really good wine from them in the past, but I've never really had any of their cheaper stuff. It's always been like the single vineyard, like Freedom Hill, or. And this is pretty much before I was into wine. I had a bottle of this that I was excited about. So man, I, I don't even want to guess what. Maybe 2004, uh -huh. something like that. Um, but enjoyed it, and then when I started shopping for myself, when I first started buying wine, uh, these guys were really on my list. I distinctly remember buying. You know, Lang Reserve for two special occasion dinners. Nice. And this was this was back in 2005 for sure. So, so you know, I've been aware from aware of them for a long time. I think that they're consistently a solid producer, um, and and fun to go fun to go visit their tasting room. It seems like right. every time I go there, they've got at least one that knocks it out of the park. They, Absolutely. Yeah. They do some other cool stuff like they do a single vineyard Chardonnay, I think. Yeah, I've got a Freedom Hill Chardonnay. And yeah. then the, uh, the the Tempranillo. Their Tempranillo is pretty good. Yeah, so. uh, their second label. Yep, good, good stuff out of the second label too. Oh, it was the first label. It's got Lang. It says Lang right on the bottle. Oh, really? Yeah. Man, I haven't had that one. I, I, I have a lot of domain No, or just says Lang. Oh, 
Great success. success. Yeah. Oh, there we go. That's yeah. news to me. That's news to me. We'll drink it. Yes. Uh, I've got yeah. it. It needs to be it needs to be pulled out and drank, honestly. We're gonna we're gonna give another shout out. John Moser put another put an awesome comment up on a wall, got into a conversation with me. He's out in Illinois and uh, he uh, discovered discovered our wine. We did the show about the, the Arizona wine, right? Mm -hmm. He really likes that stuff and is curious about Oregon Pinot. We're going to email about this, but this show is a perfect, you know, perfect bit of insight for you, right? If you like what we had to say about any of these, you can probably seek them out and check them out. But uh, thanks for watching and thanks for uh, thanks for the conversation. Actually, two more shout outs okay, for me. Good. Well, I, I'm really bad with names. I actually don't remember them. Okay. I just remember the emails. The French guy. Who we yeah, yeah, Francois. 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 I Francois. remember his first name. Yeah. Yes. So that was an awesome email. I'm, Planning on responding to it, uh, really poor uh, responding to things. And Ron responded to another one of our shows. Uh, yep, Ron Feltoven. Feltoven, there you go. That's how you pronounce. Bringing the comments, letting us know that people actually are watching the show. I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. I, I love reading your comments back. So uh, yeah, I, I'll respond to you someday. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's drink this. Awesome nose. Yeah, smells good. Just a little bit of forest floor. Yeah, it's starting to get a little, tor just a hint of that funk. You know, like this, that, that might remind you of something that's distinctly Oregon, or at least yeah. me. Um, along with lots of blackberries, like this is almost all blackberries for me. Some really nice rhubarb, giving that kind of like There is a rhubarb thing on right there. Texture to it, I really like that. Yeah, it smells awesome. And just a little, little, like, feeling of delicacy to it that I, that I really like, and that's. The nose is definitely bringing more than I expect at this price point. Mm. Nice soft tannin settled into the palate early on. Wow. Dig the acidity. The acidity centers in the center of the palate, settles in the center of the palate, and the fruit and kind of the, the, the rest of the structure kind of works around the sides. Mm -hmm. It's like it's like a mostly for fruit. I guess for me, it's like mostly like blackberry fruit and then a bit of like cherry cola uh, thing going mm -hmm. on just in the, just in the, the finish. I can totally see that. Um, the acidity is a little str on the stronger side for for me. Um, definitely not not the easy drinking of the previous wine. Uh, this is a little more substantial, but the tannins aren't there like they were in the last one for me. But the acidity is just right as if and right along the center of the tongue. It's true, and it, it, it definitely and, and I think some of those uh, rhubarb notes from the uh, from the nose are. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you all can hear that. Our yeah. sounds that way. The cat's busy. Cat hopping up a hairball. Yeah. <laughs> Get it, Bill? You know what? We're we're gonna cut. All right. Are you done now? All right. Maybe we didn't cut. I'm not sure how that's gonna play out. <laughs> uh, but, 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 but the right. the rhubarb notes from the nose are showing big time for me, mm -hmm. giving this nice tart sensation. Playing in the acidity. I don't need that rhubarb. something I need to. Right. You know, bring some around next time. Yeah. yeah. But but the city that's got definitely got like a firm touch to it. But I still like the texture. It's on the big side, but in the way that works for me. Um, and I like the lighter tannins too. It definitely has a clean feel to it. It does. Um, and I like that. It's really good. I mean. Just for me, uh, the acidity is a little stronger than I like. Sure. So, so 87 points for me. Because I mean, there's undeniable quality to the fruit. Like the fruit mm -hmm. is really delicious. Um, I'm not trying to not yet. Obviously, the Argyle, I like the Argyle a lot. It's 86 points. Like, this is this is delicious stuff and totally worth your time checking out. I mean, I think I got this for like 17 or 16 bucks. Mm -hmm. Smoking at that price point. And I say Oregon Pinot under not the, <laughs> this show is not great evidence of that. I say Oregon Pinot under 20 dollars is kind of a gamble. Um, but right here are three examples man, that really are. Three aren't. for three that, I, that I'd say all of these, the price we paid, I'd, I'd be happy to drink from the whole bottle. That's, that's solid. So. Yeah, what are you going to score this one? Yeah. Uh, what did you do again? 87 seven points. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm going to go I'm gonna go 88 on it. Um, feeling it, man. I, I, and it just as I keep drinking it, I like how the fruit settles in on the palate. There's just a little bit of complexity, not a whole lot. Mm -hmm. Um, but that's even, you know, that's exceeding expectations a little bit at this price point. Yeah, yeah. all of these wines I think are exceeding expectations at this price point. Yeah. I mean, really, you think about it, so. Awesome. Good texture, solid stuff. Nice show, and something that almost everybody that watches this thing can go check out. And I know a lot of you that, that do watch this have tasted some of these wines. We'd love to hear what you think about them. I got a question of the day. Go for it. What's your favorite sub-20 Pinot? Nice. Because there are, at this, at this, it's sort of becoming a larger market, right? There's yeah. A, there's a lot more of them, so uh, there's there's enough of them that I'd love to hear what what your favorite one is because I'll be buying it, right? I mean, 
love. Good peanut under 20 bucks is a thing to behold. Anyway. Cool. Thanks for watching. Talk to see you guys next time.